Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going into a time machine and we are traveling back to November 1994 because in that month and in that year, this set got released, Fallen Empires. And here we have a booster box. It's empty though. I'm going to spoil it straight away or wait a minute. There's something in there. Let's open up the box. It's looking pretty empty. Oh, we got a booster. One whole booster pack of Fallen Empires remains. And this pack was actually sent to me by Dan from the Herloon Heroes. Thank you, Dan, for sending this over. And I promised you that I was going to open it. And that is exactly what I'm going to do in this episode today. Okay, so uh, this is the booster I'm opening up today. I actually got this sent to me by Dan. Thank you, Dan. And Dan from the Herloon Heroes sent it my way, and I promised to open it. It's very tempted to keep it closed, but I'm going to open it up. And I'm hoping actually to find a Rainbow Veil in this one. I believe that's also the most expensive card in the set, but it's even if it would be worth just one cent, I just love the art so much, and I think it's a useful card, so I'm really hoping on that one. It currently goes for around 10 euros if you have it packed fresh. Now, there isn't a lot of value in the set. I mean, that's really the most valuable card. I think it's followed by the Elfish Farmer, which is around five, six euros pack fresh. And then you've got like Dwarven Armorer and um, uh, there's another card, um, Conchhorn. I think that's the name. Beautiful art as well on Conchhorn, by the way. I also love the Dwarven Armor. Uh, they both go for around like four euros pack fresh. Anyway, um, let's open up this one, there are, by the way, 27 reserve list cards in Fallen Empire. So there's quite a lot. So maybe we can find one of those uh, reserve list cards. Ooh, I do see a land there. It's not Rainbowville though, but it is a cool one. So here we go. So this is a Dwarven Ruins. Comes into play tapped, and then you can tap it to add one red or uh, tap and sacrifice Dwarven Ruins to add two red. That's pretty cool. And then we've got Turex Chant. Let me just put them here. Turex Chant. So that's uh, two black and one for an enchantment. During your upkeep, you pay one black or bury Turex Chant. Whenever a player puts a forest into play, Turex Chant deals three damage to him or her unless the player puts a minus one, minus one counter on a target creature he or she controls. Could be pretty useful. And then we've got, oh, I like this one, Order of Lightbur aka Order of Light Beer, two white, and this is of course the famous Pump Knight. This sees a lot of play. Protection from black. You can pay two white to give it plus one plus oh, or one white to give it the first strike until end of turn. And this really is, if you play an old school format that allows Fallen Empires, this is really a better choice in most cases than, for example, the White Knight. And here we have, oh wow, nice. Order of the Evan Hand and Order of Light Beer, uh, Beer back to back. So Order of the Evan Hand is the black counterpart so it's got protection from white, two black, plus one, plus oh, until end of turn, and for one black, first strike until end of turn. So the, the whole Fallen Empire is, is about all these, these tribes that are fighting with each other. So you've got the Order of the Ebon Hand fighting the Order of Lightbur. And here you've got the Ecation Scout. I always, whenever I see this art, I think it flies, but it doesn't. So one white for a one one, and it's got a pretty cool ability, one and tap, target creature gains first strike until end of turn. So. You know, pretty, could be pretty useful. Then we've got the Goblin Wardrums. Talking about useful, uh, one red and two. I think this is, I would say underplayed, but in my opinion, it's got some potential. I believe they call this Manus these days in the enchantment. Look at the small text, small printing. Um, what it says, let me just read the printing out to you. Each attacking creature you control that opponent chooses to block may not be blocked with fewer than two creatures. Actually, that's not that much text. It's just they've got so much flavor text on here. Really cool. I really, again, I like the art. It's, yeah, it's again Richard King Ferguson. I'm a big fan of the Fallen Empire art because you've got some of the best artists in Magic the Gathering ever participating in this set. Just absolutely stunning. Like you've got, you know, Phil Foglio, Melissa Benson. This is Richard King Ferguson. Just so many good names. Drew Tucker has a few really nice pieces. This one is Heather Hudson. I think Quentin Hoover's also uh, also made art for the set. Anyway, this is a Homerit. I actually built a Homerit tribal deck. Um, yeah, I gave, <laughs> I gave it a try. I played this one next to Blue Power. That was so funny. Uh, one blue and two to cast for this summon Homerit. It's a 2-2. Two -two. 
And this is just a ridiculous card, right? You pay three to cast it, and then it comes into play. You gotta put a tight counter on Hummer it uh, when it comes into play and during your upkeep. If there is one tight counter on Hummer it, it gets minus one, minus one. So wait a minute, you pay three mana, and you know what you get? A one, one creature. I mean, you can kill it with an Ecation Javelin here, and you've just invested three mana into this baby. I mean, it's horrible. Anyway, what happens next? And then the next turn, it gets another tight counter. It just becomes a 2-2. And then the sweet spot is when it has three tight counters. Then it becomes a 3-3, and you can attack with it as a 3-3. But it doesn't stay a 3-3 for long, because next turn, you have to remove all the tight counters again, and the whole dance starts all over again. So this Homerad... I mean, it's just, it's just not a good card. It's, it's, it's not a good card. But again, again, man, I like the art and I like the idea of these giant crap people. It's cool. They're fighting the merfolks in the set, by the way. And then we have, ooh, Goblin Grenade. This is the last of the pack. And wow, yeah, this is one of the better cards in this set. I think Hinto Turek, Goblin Grenade, Ao Pile, and the Pump Knights, those are really some of the top cards in the set And when you look at playability. So Goblin Grenade is one red in the Sorcery, Sacrifice a goblin to have goblin grenade deal five damage to one target. Now, there's something interesting. The sacrificing of the goblin is part of the casting cost. This is, some people tend to make a mistake with this. So for example, if you cast goblin grenade and I counter the grenade, you still have to sacrifice a goblin, but I don't take five damage. So now you all know. So if you've seen this, you now know, okay? And yes, I'm not kidding. Anyway, goblin grenade, beautiful last card to find. And actually, I'm just pretty happy. Look at, I mean, just look at a beautiful art. Let's just quickly go through it. So we've got this Goblin Grenade with art by uh, by Christopher Rush. That's fantastic. We've got the Hummerit by Heather Hudson. We've got the Goblin War Drums by Richard Kane Ferguson. We've got the Cation Scout by Phil Foglio. Then we have the Order of the Evan Hand, and that is by Melissa Benson. You can recognize it here, you know, that has the Sheevan as well. That's like her signature. Then you have the Order of Lightbur, which is, is this Quentin Hoover? Oh no, it's Byron. Ah, of course, yeah, Byron did some pieces as well. Because of the of the strong lines, it reminded me a little bit of Quentin Hoover. Beautiful, beautiful piece. And then we've got Turex Chant by Richard Kane Ferguson. And then we started off with this mountain, the Dwarven Ruins by Mark Poole. Really cool. Always reminds me of, uh, of the Lord of the Rings, you know, this, this little door here. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. And um, see you next time. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Zing!